Uh, magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. It's uh, past 1 o'clock, so mag-umpisa na po tayo. Uh, I'm calling to order the hearing of the Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation. This is actually a continuation of the public hearing last uh, May, May 13, 2014, which was suspended. So you will find uh, almost exactly the same agenda, except that we added we added two house bills which the committee uh, recently received, no? or was referred to my committee uh, recently. So may I ask the uh, committee secretary, Attorney Joey Garcia, to please acknowledge our resource persons here present. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. The committee would like to acknowledge the presence of our resource person in today's committee hearing. Uh, we have Director Teofisto Elnes Jr., Election and Barangay Affairs Department of the Commission on Elections. We have uh, Attorney Marjorie Martin, Deputy Director for Legal, Partido Liberal. We have Mr. Kahar Makasayon, President and CEO, Philippine Public School Teachers Association. We have Mr. Ramon R. Casiple, Executive Director, Institute for Political Af Political and Electoral Reforms, IPER. We have Mr. Quintin Paredes San Diego, Chairman, Movement Against Dynasties. We have Mr. Danilo Olivares, Movement Against Dynasties. We have Attorney Irene Aguila, Co-Convenor, Angkot. Mr. Antonio Igalinos, Co-Convenor, People's Initiative Coalition Against Political Dynasty. And Mr. Paul Nico De Golado, Legislative Staff, Bayan Muna, Party List. Thank you, Attorney Garcia. Maraming salamat din po sa lahat po ng ating resource persons na sa pagbalik po ninyo. So, uh, we have some uh, pending submissions from organizations or individuals who, which committed to submit. So, but they are not here, so we will, the committee, Joe, the committee secretary will just uh, uh, formally communicate with them about the, for example, the IBP, meron silang mga two to three hearings ago, they committed to submit some, some documents. But Comelec, I think, submitted uh, all of the documents requested by this committee as well as those requested by Senator Grace Po last hearing, so... Maraming salamat po uh, sa COMELEC. Also, tuloy na natin. Uh, during the last year, we stopped at the anti-dynasty, anti-political dynasty bills. No? Uh, so far, I have not heard any opposition no? that, that we should not have such a law. Wala. So, for, for the second time, I would ask uh, among the resource persons, is there someone or some organization which advocates that we should not have such an anti-political dynasty law? Meron po ba? So kung wala, uh, pasok na ah, yes ma'am. Please identify yourself ma'am. Good afternoon sir. I am, um, my name is Corazon Ignacio. I am representing um, Namfrel. Um, our point of view is, while we um, recognize that, that prohibit prohibiting the political dynasties is stated in the Constitution, we would like to point out that um, such law, if passed, potentially contravenes the engagement or the participation of the Philippine government in several um, international treatises, particularly the UN Commission on Human Rights in 1948, Article 21, which states that um, everyone has the right to take part in the government of his country directly or through freely chosen representatives. Everyone has a right of equal access to public service in his country, 
and the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of the government, so on and so forth. The second treatise, which we may potentially contravene if we uh, pass the um, anti-dynasty anti law, would be our engagement in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights um, of the UN General Assembly, December 16, 1966, which basically states the same engage, um, right of every citizen. And thirdly, we are participant in the Human and People's Rights um, Working Group on um, ASEAN HR Declaration, Human Rights Declaration, um, in mid-2012, which states specifically that the state shall provide equal access to opportunities for public service to all competent and qualified citizens. The state must equitably diffuse political power and prohibit political dynasties. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. This says, this supports uh, political dynasties. It's an international document, po. Yes. The one you're reading. Which document, po? Uh, ito, the third one is yes. yung ASEAN, ASEAN. Uh, Human Rights Declaration. So, yun hong dalawa ang potentially violative. So, our contention is let other mechanisms, political mechanisms, uh, correct or um, co correct the uh, bad effects of political dynasties. Specifically, we're proposing the strengthening of the uh, party system and voters' education, number one. Uh, in other words, uh, our um, w we think that uh, there are other mechanisms that will correct this. And number two, um, enacting the um, anti uh, the, the political dynasty may bring other problems equally uh, equally big problems. For example, um, the issue discussed last time about uh, Comelec having to, uh, you know, uh, decide one thing or the other. And number two, we, we cannot altogether avoid uh, proxy, you know, proxy candidates. Even if they are not uh, related uh, uh, by blood, um, the, there is no preventing um, uh, political part, there are no, there is no preventing politicians from supporting proxies to represent them. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Ignacio of Namfrel. So is it, is it the reading of Namfrel that the, and then, uh, Article 2, Section 26, uh, provision in our Constitution, uh, which mentions the anti-political dynasty, I, I, that is not mandatory? Yes, we, we think reading. that that was a reaction to the political, you know. That's yeah, a reaction, yeah, re re reaction siya, but it's found in our constitution. So is it mandatory or uh, we, optional? We think it's optional. Optional. Because of those, ano nga? Yes, uh, international. International uh, treaties. Uh, treaties plus uh, un maybe unintended uh, consequences. Problems. Uh, problems. Ah. Mon, sige. Mr. Casiple. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Well, I, I come from the human rights community, and I could not uh, prevent myself from commenting on, on that. I, I don't think there is a problem of uh, uh, cons consistency or inconsistency between the Constitution and the human rights uh, covenant and uh, the Declaration on Universality of Human Rights. I think the we, we need to introduce context here. <clears throat> In the context of the 87 Constitution, is precisely to prevent dictatorship or one-man rule, uh, a rule that was based on the creation and strengthening of political dynasties throughout the country, meaning there are selected families who became uh, uh, political uh, warlords or, or political dominant uh, political families in many areas. When the Constitution was uh, uh, approved by the people, the mandate, I think, is clear that we have to open up the system to a more democratic uh, system. So political dynasty here is not actually 
in contradiction with the intent and I think the letter of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. In fact, it's the reverse. It aims to open up the system to every qualified person who cannot otherwise serve because of the dominant uh, and uh, dictatorial power at that time. So I think the, the, the question can be resolved if we go deeper into the provisions itself of the law that implements the Constitution. But my point here is that uh, I don't think there is a, a problem with the Constitution violating the tenets of uh, international human rights at this point. But I would like to say uh, that uh, we have to be very careful in the enactment of a law uh, defining uh, the, the extent and of course the definition of political dynasty to avoid uh, uh, going to the other side. But I think uh, there is no problem here. <clears throat> Pero ma'am, uh, before I recognize Mr. Olivares, uh, Ms. Ignacio, you're not really opposing, you're just cautioning the ano, di ba? You're not really opposing, you just want to bring to the, uh, to the committee's attention the human rights uh, documents and then cautioning us that there may be problems if, especially if the law is vague, no? if it's not uh, uh, well written, ganun po ba? Yes, you're right, Your Honor. Uh -huh. We know that uh, any all laws of the Republic are served to uh, serve the best interests of the country, excepting that we would like to point it out to the body and then, then the, the conversation. And then the danger new is we should not be so focused on this one as if this is now the cure-all, diba? Yan ang sabi niya. But that was brought out last hearing din naman. The commitment of the committees, or even if we prioritize the anti-political dynasty bill, we will not be uh, neglecting yung uh, political party reform, uh, napaba voters' education, maybe yung party list reform, and even yung sa expenses. Uh, and, uh, so, sabay-sabay po yan. But, uh, reality is we cannot pass them all at the same time. So, some, one bill will overtake uh, the others. Pa. So, uh, okay, Mr. Mr. Olivares. With that clarification, uh, uh, para uh, clarified na uh, I think the section 26 of the of the Constitution doesn't need any interpretation. It's very precise that it is prohibiting political dynasties. Ang kulang lang po ay yung enabling law. Ano po? So there is no room for interpretation here. Now, uh, yung pong, uh, human rights and uh, equal access to, to uh, serve the country also negates yung opportunity of uh, of other people to be able to serve the uh, the country kasi po 80% right now 80% of the country of the of the uh, country uh, are controlled by political dynasties so where can you say that uh, uh, everybody has an opportunity to have an access to to be able to serve the country so let us not uh, equate ourselves with the other countries who do not have political dynasties as bad as the Philippines. Puno ko yung 80 percent. Merong study? Merong pong statistics ang uh, AIM. Pwede niyo po i-share sa committee? Opo. opo. Would, would the resource persons here mind if I conduct a committee hearing in a place controlled by a dynasty, by a political dynasty? Okay ba yun? Is that a good idea? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Igalimas. Wala yatang area na hindi controlled. 80% eh. That means may 20. Kung if we accept the figure of Mr. Olivares, may 20% na hindi controlled. So, in the yes, 80%. Uh, Mr. Chair, that would be appreciated because that's bringing the issue really to those areas where many of them consider it is a taboo to discuss. So, I think that's confronting the issue. After all, this is about the issue. It's not Maybe about... Maybe also part of voters' education. Precisely, uh, yes. Uh, Mr. San Diego. Mr. Chairman, kung yun know, eh, maganda suggestion nyo yun. At saka hindi na malayo, no? Kung sa Locosur, eh, talagang uh, dynasty yun. Dito na lang po tayo sa Makati. Yung dynasty po sa Makati, dito na natin uh, pag-usapan. Sa Metro Manila kasi yun, eh. I mean, accessible na kasi. Ang concern ko yung Senate Sige hearings, di ba? I mean, labas na, ilabas ang natin. Ang suggestion ko po sa Locosur, sa Singson Country. Opo. We will, kaya nga, I'm asking for that uh, uh, study by Mr. Olivares. Opo. 
Opo, we will provide that. We will provide that. Um, alam po, naging debatable po yung, yung uh, aming hinihingi na definition ng political dynasty. Ano po? So maybe fourth degree, third degree, debatable po yan kung dapat eh, yun ang maging batas. Ngunit, I just want to uh, enlighten the, the body that there is such a thing as the family code. All you have to do is refer to the family code. Uh, I forgot the, who the author of the family code is. Uh, refer to that as to so that we can be enlightened as how to define what a political dynasty would be or what a family is. Uh, ngayon, but right now, ang, ang prevalent now situation in the country is you have brothers and sisters sitting in the Senate. You have uh, mother, mother, son, and daughter, father, son, and daughter sitting, uh, uh, occupying government positions. Eh, how close can you be to a political dynasty? Uh, uh, there is no debate about that. Maybe we can debate about the third degree, fourth degree, but that's... Uh, uh, in, that's my intention, that. Mr. Olivares. Let's now go to the nitty-gritty of the law. Tignan ko lang kung there's a developing consensus or not. Uh, okay naman, in Namfrel is not really objecting. Ano lang yun, reminder lang yun na, you know, we, we should be conscious of all of this. So, sige, uh, degree. O, oh, yun na nga, degree. Uh, prohibited degree. Actually, yung, yung bill na nasa mind ko is uh, at the at separate section should now uh, govern the degree, the prohibited degree, you no? Know, para if you need to amend the the, the law, you just look at that section. So, so, so sa last hearing, ang developing consensus was two degrees. Oh. Ah, se second degree, two degrees. Ah, so, medyo okay yun. We, we, we are uh, not really expanding it uh, too wide. Uh, restrictive siya. Sa kanina, tapak, ano, uh, any comment on the two degrees? Sige na. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I recall in the last hearing, um, it was brought up that in the, in the Philippine situation, um, putting a restriction with regard to family degrees in a particular area might be difficult because um, we have small municipalities, hence people might be related. But when we look at the breakdown of municipalities, it is highly unlikely that any, any municipality or barangay for that matter will have its occupants merely belonging to all within the second degree. So I think the danger or, you know, the, what we were cautioned about last time that maybe in a bigger country such as the U.S. and you can, you know, talk about acres and acres of land. In this particular area, I don't think there's a single barangay even wherein everybody's related to the second degree, which means grandfather to grandson, husband, wife, siblings. At most, you would have uncles, cousins, nephews and those are already beyond the second degree that's why um the the danger before being cited that there might be areas where you won't have candidates i think is highly unlikely uh, okay okay so two yes yeah, so we that's why po, kami po we belong pa to the andaya mo which embraces the two degree um, two degrees is andaya degrees mo the coalition niya Sige po, uh, Mr. Pat Mr. Sanjay. Senator, uh, suggestion ko, siguro raising of funds na lang ngayon kung sino talagang uh, para sa second degree. Because anyway, hindi naman conclusive ito. I mean, for, uh, uh -huh. we're, 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 we're recording kasi. So, okay na po yun. So far, so far, ang developing consensus is two. Wala naman ako nakita, ano, uh, unless Attorney Ma Martin of Lib Liberal Party. Uh, Your Honor, I just want to bring up, um, apparently there's something that's happening in the plenary before the House of Representatives. Um, in the HOR, it's happening that it's also a second degree, actually. So it's I think there's really a consensus that uh, we should focus on the second civil degree of affinity or consanguinity. But in the House, they're looking at the law that they can actually pass. So they're thinking of considering, for example, um, making it possible that two members within the civil uh, second civil degree of affinity or consanguinity be allowed and beyond two will not be allowed anymore. That's actually what's their, what they're talking about right now because you know, they're, they're, they're thinking of a law actually, uh, Mr. Uh, that um, they could actually pass. 
So, I don't know if somebody Maganda can confirm. Na, ang, uh, isa pa ng issue, do we want a complicated law or do we want a simple law? <laughs> kasi, kasi kung gano'n, ang daming rules eh. Actually, ang daya mo, meron din kayong rules na yung critical positions lang, mga gano'n. No? So, anyway, sige, pagdating na sa prohibited degree, uh, second degree or two degrees, and this is the developing consensus, okay? But the, uh, to what offices? Yung, as, yung andaya mo, as, uh, yung meron kayong ano dun eh, dinidistinguish. Eh. To what offices should we now apply this prohibition? Uh, that's the question. And, uh, do, do the organizations have some uh, stand uh, uh, movement against dynasty, Mr. Olivares? Uh, kami po, ang position namin ay elective positions. Ano po, ang dapat uh, from the president down up to second degree. Kasi po ay ngayon eh, pati barangay, dynasty na eh. Okay, uh, we distinguish between positions being national at saka local. Okay, ganun po yata sa point of view ng COMELEC, tama po ba yun? An elected position is either national or local. Tama. Tama po? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, with, the, with, the, with the caution that Congress, House of Representatives, is a national office. Tama po ba? Uh, as far as the House of Representatives, mm. Your Honor, it's uh, the classification is local, Your Honor. Local? Yes, Your Honor. Ah, While the Senate is national, okay. Your Honor. In fact, uh, as far as the overseas voting is concerned, it's not included uh, as far as those uh, positions that will be elected by... So what would be by, national? Um, president, Vice President, Senators including the party, party list. list. Okay, yeah. so gonna pa, when, when, we, when, we, when we refer to national, uh, at least four positions yung pinag-usapan po natin. Ah. O ano po ang position ng MAD? Uh, when the incumbent is a national official, ano po, ano po yung prohibition sa kanyang second degree relatives? Uh, Inga po, uh, Your Honor, um, if you look at the composition of political dynasties right now, Although from, well, uh, let's not talk about the president because dalawa lang po silang dynasty ngayon, ano po. Uh, let's talk about senators and congressmen. Marami po sa kanila, ang kamag-anak nila ay governor, vice governor, mayor, barangay captain, all the way up to kagawad. So talaga po, we cannot uh, separate the local with the national. Because the idea of political dynasties is to control a province, a region, or the entire Philippines. So, talaga... Okay, kaya, ang, ang approach ko kasi parang gano'n. Kasi, for example, si congressman, ang brother niya, gustong tumakbo ng congressman, pero doon naman sa ibang distrito na namalayo, allowed na yun? Sa amin po, eh, hindi na dapat allowed eh. Kasi, again, it is the idea of control. For example, uh, uh, Mon, uh, yung, sa, sa Mindanao, for example, yung Amatong Brothers, for example, tama ba yun? Amat, Amat, Am, Amatong Brothers, ang Davao del Norte na governor yung isa, na governor yung isa sa may isang buwanga. Layo na nun eh. So, kaya ang so, yung approach ko sana, kung saan na, kung national official siya, bawal tumakbo ang relatives within the prohibited degree nationwide. Tama po ba yun? Is that a good rule to follow? Uh, Atone Aguila? Um, if I may, sir, um, in our case, we made po a distinction given what you mentioned that party list first we didn't touch in the in our bill because we feel the party list act can better address that. Then with regard to national elective positions, we felt that it's true now there's because of their, by virtue of their office being national in scope, their influence and power national in scope, the prohibition is national in scope. However, we feel that it might be unduly restrictive if we prohibit all, because let's say meron naman siyang kapatid who wants to also learn how it is to serve, then he maybe can run as barangay captain or as vice mayor because he or she is learning the ropes, but not as mayor, not as governor or congressman because that would be already too high a position besides that would negate the claim of learning the ropes and yeah, trying it out in public service. Um, with regard, however, to local officials, we feel that that's where the jurisdiction question comes in because by virtue of them being local officials, their influence, power, and access to resource is only 
local. So you can find the prohibition only to where they can exercise all of this. Um, we did it this way because specifically because we had in mind the uh, international um, obligations to promote you know the access to hold to be voted upon and be voted on. It's just that we feel those aren't absolute rights, and we can put in paper the qualifications by which we can make discriminations validly, and we feel those are the differences in treatment. Yeah, nga, but we will we will have to face uh, yung equal protection of the laws, di ba? But why, why why did we why did we distinguish? Eh, ako ah, ang, ang feeling ko. If the relative of a national official runs for mayor, uh, the opposition would be tougher. Him, that relative can also lose. But if the relative runs for councilor, then he, uh, he or she is, I think, a sure winner. They minus one na kaagad yung available na councilor seats. I mean, that's one way of looking at it, no? Pero... Okay, pero yun na, you, you, you're aware of the, uh, of the international alas. Sige, uh, bayan muna, Representative Mr. De Gugliato. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, the consolidated bill, which is in the plenary already, uh, contemplates that the prohibition would not cover the barangay positions, only the national and local positions, but not up to the barangay level. So if there is uh, one who would run for a uh, local position and then his relative of second degree of uh, consanguinity or affinity may run for a elective position in the barangay. Actually, one of my questions, yung barang barangay, party list, SK, sasama ba natin? So, uh, well, tignan natin, ano, uh, kasi wa, the, the law must have, uh, Ako, ah, ako, personal bias ko, uh, simple concepts and simple rules, sana, kung complicated masyado, baka magkagulo tayo. Oh. <laughs> Director Elmas, uh, for the record, Your Honor, uh, the Law Department of the Commission on Election has already submitted a position paper relative there to, and one of which is the second degree prohibition. Then, another point is uh, yung national and local given preferences, the national position. Uh, what has not been discussed here in the position paper is if it is within the same constituency, uh, no, uh, different con con jurisdiction and constituency, like the Amatongs in Mindanao. I am also from Mindanao. I am, yes, sir. So, the principle and logic behind your influence, etc., does not exist. So, although the, there's nothing here as far as the position paper of the Commission on Elections or Law Department is concerned, Your Honor, I for one would agree that considering the reason or the rationale why, why uh, we, are, we are doing this does not appear, so walang, ano, walang masyadong issues or concerns dito, Your Honor. Okay, mukhang clear naman eh. Pag national ang official, the prohibition should be nationwide subject to yung proposed uh, exceptions ni ng naandaya mo. But if it's a local position, uh, it will be within the jurisdiction. Dapat ganun, eh? fair is fair, hindi ba? Uh, opo. Uh, 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 Mr. Olivares? Um, you, you know, ang nagpobob gan around the country in um, 2014 election. And uh, we noticed that, uh, number one, uh, ang training ground po ng mga political dynasties, yung mga uh, mga bata pang mga members tumbo na sa barangay oh, and they will graduate now to be a, a mayor or a, or a congressman or a governor uh, alam po, if we provide exceptions to the rule we're opening it up to loopholes where, where uh, dynasties will take advantage for example po uh, I'll mention names po nung panahon po ni President Arroyo Dalawang congressman niya, ang anak niya, isa sa Bicol po at isa sa Pampanga. So what will, what will stop uh, a family of five children to go from different provinces, establish residence, and run for, for uh, Congress? So talagang magkakaroon siya ng mag. Isa, isa na, if ever may okay. law, isa na so, ang... National and local po, dapat no. dalawa lang uh, up to the second degree of yes. consanguinity or affinity hindi po pwede. Oh, pero yung prohibit eh, yung prohibition isa na iabot sa barangay. Opo. Iabot sa SK. Opo. Iabot sa party list. Opo. Tama, no? Opo. Kasi oh. party list is oh, also the benefits of being a congressman or congressman. Really? Okay. Oh. Good. So, yan ang position naman. Position naman. Opo. Opo. 
Uh, Attorney Kalibuyot. Um, good afternoon, Your Honor. For the information of the committee, Your Honor, the local government pertaining to the drafting of the the Sangguniang Kabataan um, Committee, Your Honor, we were also taking consideration the political parties, Your Honor. So the political dynasty, the political dynasty, Your Honor. Those the SK reform yes. bills uh, pending. Ah, tama naman yun. And even the party list reform bills. Eh, pero this is kasi this is the anti-political dynasty bill. Eh. So the the if the topic is uh, prohibition from running, it should be here in this bill. Or not in kalat kalat. This should it, this should be the the rule. Okay. So so well, compromise alang tayo don at Tony Aguila kasi. Simplification din. Sometimes gano'n eh. Tsaka hindi tayo ma-challenge ng why did we distinguish? Eh, parang mahirap. Si Vice Mayor, i-allow mo si Mayor. Si Mayor hindi siya pwede. Uh, any, any, any other opinions pa? Ah, Mr. Kasiple? Uh, Mr. Chair, I think we should uh, take note of the principle behind the ban. In this, uh, in the, in, of course, the problem. The problem is actually one, check and balance. Because if you have a concentration of power in a certain family, in a certain jurisdiction, then you, you would have a problem of check and balance there. And uh, the second, of course, regarding resources, we cannot uh, uh, expect those in power not to use government resources in one way or another. That is prohibited by law. But the reality of uh, elections in our country until we achieve... Uh, maybe a modernization uh, of our system, is that government resources are usually used. So, again, that's a problem. Now, the, I think the, the idea that should be introduced here is that you have to effectively ensure that check and balance is not weakened by an arrangement uh, like a political dynasty. So, I, w I would uh, suggest that... Uh, uh, to simplify the, the ban, it, one, I, I support the, the Commission election position here. It be limited to jurisdiction. Let's say in a province, uh, you cannot have the same family to go as governor, vice governor, uh, provincial board members, mayors, congressmen, uh, beyond the second degree of consanguinity uh, within, within the province. But outside of the province, that's another thing altogether. Uh, I think we can we can allow that considering the principle of second balance here is not uh, affected. Again, with regards national and local, uh, that's the vertical uh, uh, relationship. If a jurisdiction is within the uh, another jurisdiction, which is a larger jurisdiction, then we should look into the actual second balance existing. For example, a barangay captain does not have an impact on national politics. And uh, for that matter, vice versa. Yeah. I mean, unless uh, that uh, senator really wants his brother to win in a barangay uh, position, uh, I think it's absurd uh, in, in that sense. But if you're talking governor, for example, and a senator, that's different. And uh, if you want to make a distinction here, uh, the check and balance would also apply in that. The, the two positions are very powerful and uh, they can very well uh, impact on national politics. So uh, my suggestion here actually is uh, if we can create, I don't know if it's too late, create a technical working group, go into the nitty-gritty of this. We'll do that. Uh, we just agree on the on the basis of the proposals. Uh, because the, the, this, uh, everything we say is recorded, so para may record tayo. Maganda nga yung, yung, mga, yung purposes of the law. Ilagay rin natin sa isang section yun, the purpose. What is the purpose in, to maintain the check and balance? Ilang, ang, ang point ko is mahirap eh. Yung eh, mayor, uh, there is an incumbent national official, you prohibit governor because of the, sabi mo, that's critical position, it affects national. How about mayor? City mayor? Yes. How about mayor? Bawal, bawal, bawal din, the city mayor. Eh, how about a mayor of a... There are some big towns, ah? And a lot of cities, big towns. So how do you... You know, you know if, if we are so... if It will, it, it might be too complicated. Ah? So, anyway, sa TWG, lalabas na, ilalabas natin. I mean, erase ko lang yan. I mean, erase ko lang yung issues na yan. Ah? Uh, if, we are, if, if we are to have this rule, 
uh, banning political dynasties might as well have a standard uh, rule. I think the Constitution also did not distinguish. Uh, sabi ng Constitution, eh, as may be defined by law, define political dynasty, then you ban them. <laughs> Yan ang nangyari. So definition, na, I mean, even yung definition sana, if, 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 if the organizations can submit to this committee uh, the best definition that you can come up with, no? Uh, ah, who's raising his hand? Uh, meron ba? Ah, sige, ito ni Agina. Sir, if I may also, um, with regard, uh, that's why we, one reason why we also made a distinction with regard to the national elective official and its impact on a local official. For instance, um, we didn't include um, council members because, for one, the council members' vote is just a single vote out of a out of a body, say of eight or twelve, depending. So, and that one person will not have a second degree relative within the council anyway. So. Um, Are you so sure about Because there's a ban in the local level. So for ban that... in the local level? Yes, sir. Because um, if we're looking at the ban between the national level and the local level, so that for that local official, say they're brothers, the brother is a senator, then you have a counselor who is a brother also, then in that locality, because there's a ban on the local with regard to second degrees, degree relatives, mag-isa lang din siya dun sa konseho mula sa second degree wala siyang ibang kamag-anak. So, if at all, meron man siyang relative na nasa national, it's just one vote that he has in the council anyway. Because he's alone. Uh, so, yun yung, yung that's why our... Uh, situations mahirap. Eh. You can never be sure. Bakit, bakit, bakit sure ka na never siya magkakaroon ng po, second degree sa council? Hindi kasi ka, po, hindi ka po sa local level... They run, they run at the same time. Yes, oh. because po, if we implement the political dynasty ban, hmm. then in the local level, because they all belong to the same jurisdiction, no, peop no persons within the second degree can run together. So, impossible for that there is still no dyn political dynastic situation wala pa. but the candidacies or they can uh, potentially can give rise to a dynastic situation di yun magkapatid tumatakbo pagka councilor pareho potentially both can win hindi ba how do we res how do we resolve uh, such a situation um in our in our proposed or suggested bill, sir, um, we proposed a mechanism whereby the first person who, the first bona fide candidate who filed the COC, so that does away with nuisance candidate, does away with those not serious, and then Kamala crafts you know, uh, the rules, as they usually do with regard to determining how it happens. But for us, the basic premise that you look at who is the bona fide and the first to file that has to be embodied in the law. So that's the mechanism we provided for those who are not yet politically dynastic but might become. Yeah, it has been reduced to unahan because both can be bona, bona fide uh, serious candidates. So, yeah, well, in, 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 in PWG, ano natin yan, pero you, you should not be so sure na well, hindi, hindi mangyayari. It, it can happen eh. Kasi hindi ko, ma, hindi ko ma picture bakit eh. Imposible mangyayari. A senator and then two two siblings running for counselor in the same in, in his uh, LGU. Oh, bakit ba? ba? Kasi sa, 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 sa idea nyo kasi hindi nyo ipagbabalanan eh. Ang counselor. Ano ito? Miss the mic. Ano? Ay, bawal po for Sen within... Senator National. Apo. Uh, relative within the prohibited degree runs for councilor in si a city. Bawal o hindi? Kung silang dalawa lang po, hindi po bawal. Okay. Pero dahil, pero siya lang po sa konseho ang maaaring tumakbo na kapatid nung senador. Kasi, okay. Ay, kung meron senaryo... pa siyang pangatlong kapatid, uh, hindi na po pwede. Okay, yun yung scenario 1. No, okay, scenario 2 nga is senador. Dalawang magkapatid, sabay tumatakbo for council. You will disqualify on the basis of your rules na first to file. The first serious candidate to file. Is the one that will be upheld. Yeah, okay, we, 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 ako, ako, I will try to avoid the very complicated uh, rules. Na. So, well, okay, yun, they try to do that, no? Pero, baka sa, uh, Komelek, can you enforce such a, uh, a system? Uh, ba, baka magkaroon tayo na ano, uh, operational uh, setbacks dito, no? Especially when Komelek drops the implementing rules and regulation. Kasi kung physical na unahan lang ang pagbasihan natin, uh, para ma-determine natin kung sino yung magiging ano, uh, kandidato. So, I, I think mayroon tayong ano dito sa implementation 
operational ano aspect. Iyon nga, yun yung mga ganun ang paglawaan natin, ano, yung mga scenarios na kunyari, uh, wala pang dynasty situation, but there are two certificates of candidacy that if they, candidates, if they succeed, they will now be a dynastic situation. How do we prevent the dynastic situation from from arising? Yun po yung mga, wala pang magkapatid na senador, dalawang tumakbo pagka senador, ang gagawin natin? Uh, Mr. Uh, De Degolado and then Ms. Ignacio after him. Uh, Mr. Chair, yung uh, current bill ngayon in plenary, it contemplates yung situation na kung saan yung, yun nga may dalawang magkakasabay. Pero yung nakita, yung na-incorporate na mechanism dito is through COMELEC which would provide rules na kung saan magdodraw lots or whatever uh, mechanism. Pero specifically provided dito through a raffle or drawing of lots among the concerned candidates unless one would uh, withdraw dun sa pagtakbo niya sa uh, for office. Ignacio, before I, I, I bring up my next point. Yun na nga, ano, sa discussion, napakarami ng complication. So, I'd like to invite the attention of the working group that will be convened sa kapabilidad ng COMELEC to implement this. We may be stretching the uh, work of the COMELEC too much and taking it away from the uh, real purpose of election, which is to determine the will of the people in selecting the best candidate for the position. If you are limiting the candidates already at the start, aren't you taking away the essence of the, of the election process? And at the same time, stretching the capability of the COMELEC as it is. Look, the COMELEC, the, uh, during the period nearing the election, is already is looking at the implementation of the automate automation. Number two, at the looking at the election expenses on hand to no real time yan ha. Number three, yung mga protesta ng mga kandidato kandidato not related to political dynasties yet. Violations and what else are, are they looking at? Yung mga sit yung mga uh, voters registration. So, hindi ko makita kung saan energy pa ng COMELEC aasikasuhin itong magkapatid ba ito, ikatlo, ikatlong kapatid. May... Too much effort for so little gain for me, for, for, for Namprel. The opinion. Uh, may, may I recognize first the uh, Mayor Jose Isgana of Santa Fe Cebu, Mayor, and uh, his party. Uh, Mayor, po ka nga rito, pakinggan ka nga namin sa anti-political dynasty. <laughs> At saka, for example, uh, isang, isang objective is yung, isang evil is yung check, no? sabi mo check. Cannot relatives within the prohibited degree check each other? I mean, there are some, there are some relatives sa talagang Awe, eh, talagang iti-check itong kapatid ko, takbuhan ko rin. And so, yung mga ganun, do, do, we, do we even have to anticipate this in the law? Uh, Mr. Kasiple. Well, I have two points, uh, Mr. Chair. Yung isa yung hindi ito complete kasi ng solusyon sa dynasty. Mas, in fact, for me, ang mas effective na batas, kung magkabatas man, yung political party reforms. Kasi mayroong process sa political parties, di ba? Yung selection of candidates. Doon pa lang ma-resolve mo na yan eh. In a political manner. Kung sino yung mga tatakbo. Eh, ang nangyari sa atin, ipinipilit natin maging political party, yung kumilik eh. Mamimili ang kumilik ka kung sino pa tatakbuin. Ang second point ko po dito, yung uh, prohibition only applies sa constitution kapag may situation na ng dynasty. Ako, I'm against doon sa pre-qualification. Eh. Yung bago pa man mag-file ng kandidasi, eh. uh, sa kumilik mo, ibigay yung bar din. Ang, hindi ko alam, no? kung uh, legally feasible, pero ang mas mabuti sa akin, yung bang, tulak po sila, sige, at the risk. Ano? Now, you can have a role, let's say, na simple lang. Kung tumak mo mayor yung isa, yung isa, vice mayor, nanalo yung sila pareho, hindi, makaupo yung vice mayor. Yung mayor lang, opo. Ngayon, kung nag-aaway sila, yung nasabi mo kanina, nag-aaway, eh, tumakbo silang mayor pareho. I-allow mo dapat. Kung sino ba nalo, eh, sorry na lang yung kapatid niyang natalo. Ngayon, kasi nang danger sa kanya kung uh, doon sa role na sinasabi ko, tumakbo sila ng ibang posisyon, dahil yung posisyon will prevail. 
kung gusto natin ng simple rules, ano? Uh, mahirap kasi yung nagpapay pa lang ng kadibasi, doon mo na i-weed out, eh. May problem doon. Yung ulahan ang sinasabi kami na... But we will take a look at the bill of Andaya mo kasi nag-anticipate na sila ng scenarios and they came up their own rules. Pakinggan muna natin ang local government po. Uh, Mayor Rizgana, uh, thank you for... Uh, <laughs> for without notice, uh, 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 taking your uh, seat and then uh, to share with us. Ang topic po natin is the anti-political dynasty bill spending. So, um, ano po ang sentimento ng isang local government official katulad niyo po? Uh, maraming salamat po. Una sa lahat ay kasama ko po yung uh, ang Vice Mayor po at saka ibang mga uh, councillors nandito po. Katapit uh, mo si Vice Mayor? Hindi po. Ah, <laughs> Maganda po ang ano. Uh, firstly, I would like to to ano sa history no? kasi way back na 1986 to 1992 my father was a mayor in our hometown. Then in that year 1992 uh, gusto kong pumalit sa kanya. no? That time may prinsipyo yung father ko. Sabi niya, hindi pwede. Hindi ko kaya ipasa lang sa anak ko. And then, uh, yung pumalit sa kanya, actually, bagong mayor po ako, uh, 21 years ang, ang dynasty ng pamilya na pinalitan ko. Uh, father, anak, tapos asawa ng anak. 21 years ang pinalitan ko. Kaya maganda po ito ngayon, kung talagang seryosoyin po natin, Uh, hindi ko malaman kung ang anak ko pasundin ko rin sa akin no? pero mas maganda po at uh, kami po sa sa lokal uh, lalo na sa grassroots sa amin uh, nakikita namin kahit sa mga karatig na bayan namin nakikita namin yung uh, paano strategize na wala ng ibang pamilya makapasok ang mayor at sa vice mayor pakinggan natin yan kasi yan ang evil na i-address natin sa law eh. sige pa tuloy yun ang mayor at saka vice mayor, magpinsang buo. Tapos, uh, pag may maibang pamilya na gustong pumasok, uh, may, meron din sa intervention na, na hindi na majority ay sila pa rin mga pamilya. So, marami po yan sa, sa mga lokal po. Ang gamit ni mayor ng word na pamilya, medyo loose yun, ha, kasi pinsan na yung sinabi niya. Ang ating developing consensus, uh, magkapatid lang mayor 2 degrees. Uh, second degree of uh, consanguinity. Okay, pero meron rin yung si Mayor na magandang punto na isa rin uh, opinion ng aking pinaaral sa Constitutional uh, Commission Deliberations. Ang kanyang opinion ng aking consultant is that itong anti-political dynasty provision ay nilagay sa Constitution bilang uh, check natin against, against circumvention of the term limits Uh, so, because if we, agree, if we agree with that uh, observation, then the, the, the law uh, will have, just, we have to just concentrate on this evil that uh, to prohibit political dynasty so as not to circumvent the term limits found in the Constitution. Uh, and Mr. Incarinos, yeah, uh, uh, maybe just to add to that, uh, in fact, uh, yung isang study done by uh, Pablo Kerubin, Uh, yung findings niya sa, sa Philippines in relation to other uh, countries in Latin America, uh, ineffective talaga, regressive ang uh, term limits kasi nagpapalit-palit lang eh. And his studies, one of the uh, highlights there is that it actually creates more dynasties because nagkukontinue lang eh. After your term limits exhausted, uh, si tatay, uh, tapos na si tatay, the son, so it expands, it regresses eh. So, uh, in, in view also of the idea raised by Mon, uh, I personally I also support the other reform issues on political party and party list. But to me, uh, nga, these are all tied. Eh. Uh, we cannot only have a dynasty. Ako personally, it's, I'm not saying that this is the end all. This is just one, because even if you have a p political party law passed, there's no guarantee there that there are no dynasties pa rin. In fact, uh, as we speak now, the, the parties are all uh, populated by dynasties, as it is, because we have a very weak party system at the moment. So, both yan, I should uh, complement uh, dynasty, political party, and probably the party list also. So, 
ano 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 mo ang reaction mo dun nga sa circumvention of term limits na yung evil na yun isali na rin natin dito sa anti-political dynasty no? even even though wala ano ha there will be no two relatives o occupying uh, public office at the same time it is just that the son succeeds the father do we now do we now include that in the concept of a political dynasty yeah but isa lang sila isa lang sa pamilya yun pero pinapasa ni father sa sa prohibited degree yung kanyang position yeah but uh, the the proposed at least on our part the proposed uh, bill uh, also pays close uh, attention to the law on uh, term limits so hindi agad siya tatamaan. He will be allowed, the, the incumbent or those affected will be allowed to finish the term. Uh, that's a concession actually. Finish the term, okay. Yeah. But uh, after your term, wala na. Can, can, I, can a relative within the prohibited degree run for your position? No, no. Well, succession yan eh. Kaya covered sa bill yeah. yan? Succession. So, kahit na, kahit na, yeah, kahit na yung situation, ha, kinaklaro ko lang, ang situation kasi nun is, wala na siyang ibang kamag-anak na incumbent, siya lang. Except yeah. that previously held by a relative within the prohibited yes, degree. That's the, the most common uh, form of dynasty, yung succession. Uh, the succession applies to uh, the prohibitive relations within the second degree, either consanguinity or affinity. So, succession, that's the most common. The other is yung expansion, eh, yung, uh, 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 so yung running in tandem. Uh, okay, yeah. we have a consensus, developing consensus on that, sa term, sa term limits. Uh, Pero Mr. yung Mr. succession Mr. po, uh, dapat din po yung pagwaway niyan eh. Uh, but, cover dyan. Ngayon, yung sabi niyo po kanina na yung mga nag-aaway, yung mga ka magkapatid, ano po. Usually po yan, nangyayari pag malaki na masyado yung dynasty. Na talagang, akin to, sa iyan, kaya, doon sila nag-aaway. Uh, may I suggest, just to, just to simplify our, our arguments, Kasi po, in, 19, in 2008, I came up with a listing, a comprehensive listing of all political dynasties in the country. And talagang pag nabasa niyo po yan, talagang makikita niyo na talagang controlled by a few families yung buong bansa natin. So I suggest that the COMELEC come up with this uh, listing para ho mga guide tayo, gano'ng kalalaba itong dynasty na ito. Uh, from, the, from the president down to the, to the kagawad, how extensive is this? Because, tama ko lang natin, inaaral ba ng COMELEC ito? Are you concerned about uh, political dynasties? Meron kayong mapping? Uh, you have your own data or conclusions as to... Wala kasi sa definition, sir. Kaya hindi ko alam anong gagamitin nilang definition na... Uh, uh, Director Elnas, use the mic, please. Uh, so far, uh, wala tayong parameters ngayon kung saan papasok. Ka, so... We ask the COMELEC, COMELEC, give us data on political dynasties. Wala kayo noon. Hmm. Mike, sir. Mike, sir. Uh, wala, Your Honor. But uh, siguro titingnan kung ano, yung sa Certificate of Candidacy, tapos yung... Ano yung definition gagamitin nyo? Yung, yung relation lang. Kaya, yeah, anong degree? Second degree or whatever yung parameter. Oh, so, wala na. Wala na. And wala. So, wala na kayo. Ano. So, kaya na this law, this law will, ano... Pwede ba ganito gawin natin? If there are no more... Sir, as ah, I ko po, up, up, yung sorry, but... present situation, oh, incumbent kayon, uh, so, the na definition sa po yung situation. I mean, definition gamitin nila. What is a political dynasty? Well, ilista lang po yung ano, yung mga magkakamaganak uh, up to what degree? Uh, oh, oh, up to fourth degree. Makikita niyo po yung extent ng web. So, so yung, uh, parang uh, open na concept po natin ng political dynasty. Statistics na lang po ito, you know, ano eh. Uh, di, pero, di, tatanatanong ko nga kung meron silang ginagawa. Wala, no? So, the, okay, so. Anyway, ah, uh, Tignan natin, we will ask the chairman kung if he can spare manpower to, to chair. But I thought you have already a study na 80% controlled okay. by dynasties. Opo, oh, opo. Oh, 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 we will we'll use that. Oh, 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 oh. na po natin. Yes. Oh. Okay, so marami pa ako mga scenarios dito pero talaga maubos yung time natin eh. Uh, like yung inang... Ah, sige, attorney Aguila. Sorry po. I just like to put this on the record. Um, kam we, kami po sa angkop kasi we, we aim to push young individuals to run or enter politics. We sort of take offense that having a law is 
we'll just have very little gains considering all the work that will go into this. First off, there was a study co um, commissioned by the NYC in 2010 stating that 74 to 78% of the youth believe that political dynasties should be considered illegal. And that same study also says that two-thirds of the youth sadly only find themselves occupying positions of follower and not leader. And, I th and we believe that one reason is because they feel it is almost impossible for them to penetrate roles of leadership, specifically and spe especially politically. So it might be perceived as little gain because not everybody wants to enter the political arena, but we feel that for the youth, it is a very big issue. And we feel that this is a youth issue, really, you know, because we, the youth will be inheriting the government we have. So it might cause a lot of work, which Kamalik is already doing because it weeds out new sense candidates, it weeds out those who are disqualified by law, and it should be doing that. But maybe it's the structural thing of Kamalik, how the work is done, but maybe I think we shouldn't be little. Maybe the it's the absence of the anti-political dynasty law, which turns them off. They yes, that's, preci that's precisely what we feel. That's why we feel that it's not little gain. It's a very big gain, especially to future leaders. So, ang plano ko ganito, paano ko yung technical working group na natin itong bills? Let's come up with uh, the best that we can come up with. Let's call it our model anti-political dynasty bill. But you allow me to bring this to to the 80%, to some of the 80% areas controlled by... But we, they will not discuss a specific uh, bill. Hindi itong, hindi itong three bills. Uh, so a technical working group na natin ito. So but before we leave the topic, uh, so, uh, baka teachers, you, the teachers, you want to say something sa political dynasty, sir? Dito muna tayo. Kung meron lang, kung meron lang, okay lang. Uh, Mr. Malaya, kung meron lang, ano, before we leave the topic. Uh, yes, sir. Actually po, uh, maraming salamat. Pero actually, oh, yes, sa mga sayo ng PPST, so actually, uh, ang biktima po palagi ng political dynasty ay ang mga teachers uh, during election day. And we would like to present that later on. During the time, uh, uh, during the uh, time that uh, the bill uh, the, the bill as proposed by yeah, Senator uh, Bamakino will be tackled. Uh, the agenda, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. So, okay na siguro yung course of action na gano'n, no? Uh, yung mga ideas ninyo, kasi some are not captured by the pending bills. Yung house bill, yan natin, what best we can. Pero ipahihiling ko pa. Sana. Oh, Mr. Penson, Kusada Contra Dynasty, uh, last word po before we leave the, the topic up. As uh, Mr. Sandor, we are very happy that uh, we have moved forward with regards to this uh, main concern of ours. Much uh, days and hours has been spent on this uh, issue, and uh, as you have seen, as we have submitted to you the draft uh, bill that we prepared, it's all there, uh, and 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 the uh, and the feelings of uh, most of the sectors that we have consulted with already taken uh, into consideration. So uh, the soonest we can, uh, or the soonest that the uh, Senate can adopt this, the better for the country. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Mayor Isiana, thank you for your uh, contribution to to our hearing uh, today uh, on the spot. Huh? <laughs> thank you, Mayor. So, yeah. uh, so shall we proceed now to, to the other uh, bills and resources in the agenda? Anong next natin? Anong next natin? Hmm? Oh, meron kasi there's a ah, Comelec, there's a there's a bill as uh, filed by Senator Estrada. Uh, those ano pala those resource persons who who do not have any more ano, a concern with depending bills can can leave. But after taking your merienda, please and coffee. Thank you. We'd like to thank you, sir, for the invitation, and we'd like to extend whatever assistance that we can to the work of the TWG. We have several materials yes. we can share with the um, TWG that will be Yes, planned. I talked to the committee secretary and to, to my uh, lawyers. They will have to be proactive to reach out to you to help, to help uh, craft this uh, substitute bill to capture all of the ideas. I'm sorry, Levaris. Uh, sir, uh, as a parting word, sana po, I-fast-track na ng 
ng inyong committee ito pong bill na ito. At kasi po, sobra lang discussion. Eh. We, we cannot do, we cannot say anything anymore. Uh, and uh, I think it's up to the, the Senate to come up with the bill. Uh, we have said enough. It, it has been debated all over the place. And it's up now to your committee po. Uh, actually, actually, hindi na nat we are mean, not after debates anymore, but we are after the hard work of capturing the ideas. Eh. Kaya nga po, uh, 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 ideas have been expressed, uh, scenarios have been uh, painted, how, and then rules have been proposed. How do we capture all of this in law? Yun, yun po ang po challenge actually. So, I'm, I'm anticipating yung TWG, wala na pong debate dyan, tulungan po tayo dyan na how to capture the idea, how to re reduce it into words which are clear, which will provide the rules found in the law. Okay, yun po ang ating gagawin. But, but ito sabi ko, you give me time. Once we come up with this bill, you give me time to bring it to other parts of the country para makita ko naman yung reaction nila. Sige, uh, can I suspend for one minute? Thank you. Uh, let us resume and thank you to all of the resource persons uh, uh, on the political uh, anti-political dynasty bills. Thank you very much for your active uh, participation. Okay, let us tackle uh, tackle Senate Bill Number Twelve Ninety One. It's an Act amending Section Two Sixty One W of the Omnibus Election Code. The, ta the subject matter is your Treasury warrants. It's a simple bill. It clarifies yung, uh, the payment. Because it, it could be a very familiar comment, could you know, it could it could be misinterpreted as uh, uh, referring to all payments within the within the prohibited period. So that part, the payment the payment which which is, which is an election offense is the payment for works re rendered or done during the prohibited period, and the payment is also made during the prohibited period. So attorney Co of the comment. Uh, th thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the stand of the Commission, Your Honor, is that we have no objection about the uh, proposed uh, amendment of the uh, Section 261W of the Omnibus Election Code, Your Honor. As regards to the payment of Treasury warrants uh, within the prohibited period and with uh, for works, the prohibited, prohibited, prohibited uh -huh. period, Your Honor. I think you, sh you are familiar with this one because this in the 15th Congress this already passed this reach the plenary. So okay, so yes, sir. any other comments uh, from the other resource persons? Okay, number okay, naman, okay naman po to. You don't see any danger here. We are we are relaxing actually we are relaxing the law. Huh? The, uh, as currently written, mas ano siya, mas strict siya. We are now relaxing it that you can make payments during the prohibited period. Wag lang. Wag lang for public works or other uh, contracts implemented during the prohibited period. I'm a part of that that's the effect, right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so okay, okay, we can move on. Ito na lang sundin ko. Ito na lang. Ito na lang, di ba? Ito. Okay. Okay, we have two bills. We have two bills: one one forty six and two zero twenty six. Expanding or providing or elaborating on the grounds for declaration of a candidate as a nuisance candidate. May I get uh, op opinions, please? Uh, so okay, let's start with the Comelec, Attorney Kalibuyot. Your Honor, we do not have any objection with regard to the with regard to the bills as to 2026, Your Honor. Um, because this would really help the this would really help the commission um, identifying the nuisance candidate, and then also another your honor as to eleven twenty six your honor, we um and forty six. I'm sorry, your 11, honor. Forty six, ma'am. Um, twenty twenty six, your honor. We do not have any objection, and then we have a recommendation, your honor, um, pertaining to 
one of the grounds uh, as a reasons candidate when it is shown that the reason for filing the certificate of candidacy is to obtain money or any, any other consideration, Your Honor, we might consider it as an election offense, Your Honor. It is one of the recommendations of the... In the, in the listing of election offenses, you do not think it is it is already covered? Um, it is not yet included, Your Honor. So running for the purpose yes, of uh, uh, enriching oneself, you will make it an off election offense? Yes, Your Honor, because in the pro, uh, in Article 261, Your Honor, only voting, um, vote buying and vote selling, which is included in the uh, uh, prohibition, Your Honor, not into running, Your Honor, for the consideration of money or consideration for running into a candidacy. So what? Uh, oh, sige, at Director Elnas. Scenario dito, Your Honor, no? Uh, Ma-declare itong nuisance candidate, it's because uh, walang intention, na bona fide intention of running or participating in... Present law, di ba? Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. And aside from that, Your Honor, there is an ill or... Uh, um, this is motivated by some political ano, uh, maneuverings, Your Honor for the advantage of one or other candidates, Your Honor. So, tatakbo parehong pangalan, uh, pareho yung first name, middle name, at saka surname, uh, tatakbo sa just to destroy the candidacy of... Uh, Another one. Yeah, yeah, Pero that's, that's already governed by the, the lack of bona fide intention. Yes, yeah, Your Honor, Iran. but uh, that's for purposes of declaring him as a nuisance candidate. But as far uh, as the want it to be election, election, offense. election offense, Your Honor, um, so you're proposing two. I, but what from this discussion, the Comelec is proposing two uh, new election offenses in our enumeration of election offense. Yeah, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I just want to Your Honor because... Yung, oh, oh, uh, yeah. And the good thing Can I ask the Comelec to draft the, ano, the, how, uh, the wording? How do you want... Uh, how you want it to appear in the Omnibus Election Code if we amend it. Yun to. Ilan ba yung mahaba na enumeration election offenses, di ba? Dadagdag yun na naman yung last, last uh, additional letters dyan, eh. Uh -huh. Sige, tingnan natin how you will face it. That it should be an election, it will be an election offense if, di ba? Candidate trans to ano? Uh, for, the, for the information of this honorable body, Your Honor, uh, at present, ang Commission on Election is on the process of drafting uh, a new omnibus election code that includes uh, mga bagong batas at saka yung mga inputs ng COMELEC so that we can come up with a revised uh, omnibus election code, Your Honor. Uh, Pero umpisa na natin dito kasi lumabas na itong dalawang ano nyo. Eh. So if, sometimes, eh, ang code, eh, alam mo namin code, eh, ilan yan, 300 uh, sections yan. Eh. <laughs> Kung may isang section lang na controversial, ano na yung code. But we, ano, yung maganda yung dalawa. So tama yun, ano? So the, candi the, the, the nuisance candidate uh, who is uh, parang... Uh, Mercenary. Mercenary said, ba? Uh, he is paid to run to destroy the candidacy of another person. Ang penalty niya ngayon is he would just be disqualified as a nuisance candidate. Ang gusto niya ilagay to, for, to, to really uh, deter such an act is to make it an election offense. Okay? Tama po yun. Yeah. Da dalawa ito, Your Honor. One is, tatanggap ko ng pera for purposes of running para mabulabog yung, ano, yung candidacy ng isa. Yung isang naman is, wala kang tatanggapin na pera, it's because, ano, tutulungan mo lang yung isang kandidato para masira yung isa. Oh, so, even tama. without receiving money... Right, 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 right. I know, I know, tama. Oh. I-cover nyo na dun sa, ano, uh, I'm asking the comic to uh, put this in writing, your proposal. Simple lang, I mean, uh, these are just phrases or sentences, eh, which will capture yung scenarios that you want to be captured. So, that's a good, ano, that's a good... Uh, uh, new idea uh, no, resulting from the pending Senate bills. Okay, so Your Honor. Oh, yes, uh, Director. Uh, magpaalam po ako, Your, Your Honor. Uh, I'll be attending the st uh, steering committee of the Commission on Elections on which my department is involved uh, relative to the conduct of registration at saka power outage, Your Honor. I will, I will be reporting with, uh, no, before the steering committee, Your Honor. Before you leave, uh, 
three minutes. Can you give us ano uh, updates? Ano uh, what's happening with the Comelec? Uh, preparation for 2016, the registration. Uh, ano ano pang alam mo? Overseas voting, etc. Now, as far as uh, local registration, your honor, ongoing your registration natin. Uh, although some areas, especially in Mindanao, mayroon tayong power outage doon. In fact, nakapag-submit na kami ng ano ng report on that. And on the basis of the report submitted by election officers, provincial election supervisors, and regional directors from Mindanao, uh, kinakategorize natin yung mga areas uh, wherein uh, itong area na ito kailangang magbigay na kami ng generator sets or we will just suspend the registration if in case one to two hours lang, uh, etc. And we already uh, we also identified areas wherein despite the fact na walang power supply pero the local government unit has its own, its own uh, generator sets wherein naka, ano, naka-avail yung office of the election officers natin of which continuing ang registration natin, Your Honor. How many voters are, registered voters are at risk of having their registration delisted because of lack of biometrics? Ilang million pa po ito? Uh, we have 8 million, Your Honor. 8 million pa rin. Kailangan magtulungan tayo manawagan dito pa ulit-ulit. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, that is uh, our target, Your Honor. And as of now, uh, parami at parami yung na, na yung nagpapa-validate. Uh, Ang masabi siguro natin, sino ba sila? Uh, sin, uh, sino ka na dapat ka magpa-validate because ano, ilang taon ka o uh, at, uh, anong year ka nag-register? Dapat para klaro? Yes, Your Honor. Mayroon kaming listahan bawat city and municipality and each um, registered voter na walang biometrics, pinapadala na namin ng notice and we posted these notices sa mga strategic areas. Sinulatan ninyo? Yeah, yes, Your Honor. And not also that, um, mayroon kaming massive information campaign. In fact, si Chairman Brillantes has been telling ano, uh, through the media na magpapa, ano, magpapavalid. Ang consequence talaga, I remember that, that law, no? pinasa natin sa 15 Congress, ang consequence talaga nun, they will not be allowed to vote in the 2016 elections. Tama po ba yun? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. Your Honor. Yeah, po, klarong, klarong. I, I, we, we really made that clear in that law. Uh, any, any update on the 2016 elections preparations? Uh, uh, what system will be used? Um, Nihinihintay pa yung, ano, yung, yung recommendation ng CA. I don't know if uh, nakapag-submit na ng recommendation ng CAC, whether OMR or uh, DRE or some other technology, Your Honor. Sige. Uh, we are also preparing for the if in the event na walang mapasa na batas as far as the uh, resetting of the SK elections, Your Honor. So, ang default natin ngayon is between October to uh, February ang election. So, we are putting it sa timelines namin. We have already the timelines as far as the conduct of elections sa SK. February 21 ang target namin na uh, if in case walang batas ma na may pasa, Your Honor. If in case wala ba sa SK, SK elections will be held February to 2015 under the old law. Tama? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the old law. Uh, tapos, ang default uh, lang bali. Yes, sir. Um, ang medyo may konting issue na lang dito is yung registration. Whether we will conduct a general registration for the SK or incremental na lang because we have already this list of voters as far as the SK. Tapos yung mga disqualified na, yung nag eight more than eight days kayo na magdetermine yeah. sa birthday tatanggalin na lang namin your honor uh, anyway sige uh, that's ano okay so we will let the director Elnas go thank you director for uh, attending uh, this afternoon's uh, committee hearing okay so we, <coughs> we should go to ano Senate Bill 2178 puntahan natin doon yung are you aware of this proposal <coughs> making election service non compulsory for public school teachers so, pakinggan muna natin yung proponent and the reaction from the Comelec and from the other resource person. Sige, Mr. Makasayon, ano pong position nyo dito? Have you read the, have you, have you seen the bill? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, firstly, I would like to uh, say good afternoon to each and everyone, especially the chairman of this committee. So, the, the position of the PPST as a whole is, this bill is a welcome development as far as the teachers of this country is concerned, for for several decades already that I've been a teacher, this has been the perennial problem of teachers 
when we are confronted with election uh, activities, we are already trembling. Teachers actually all over the land are trembling whenever there are elections because for sure there is no other people to be assigned or deputized by the COMELEC except the teachers. So whether we like it or not, we really must have to serve. So that's the mandate. Now, with, the, with this proposal, I've said, it is really a welcome development that is taking place in the, in the Senate, especially so that uh, on the high security risk, teachers actually are exposed to high security risk. In fact, in the previous election in Region 12 particularly, we lost one teacher after the barangay election uh, that poor teacher was shot to death eight times in the breast. El, oh, where did, where, where Palimbang, did this happen? Palimbang, in Palimbang Sulu. municipality. Palimbang? Oh, Sultan, Sultan Kodrak. Yeah. So up to this moment, yung pagkamatayin ng grupo ay walang nangyari. It's just forgotten. That's for the high security risk. And just recently, I received a uh, an instruction for our regional director that in one province in Region 12, uh, some 27 teachers are actually uh, sued to court by by politicians. So these 27 teachers are actually groping in the dark because alam mo naman po ang guru. Pag sinabing kaso, kala nila, babibilang na sila. Pagkaso, pag sinabi mo ang, ang teacher na pailan ng kaso, nagraratal na yan, sabi niya, how can I feed my, my children? How can I teach? How can I go to school? Kasi ab magiging abala sila. So that's the, the risk that they are facing. Secondly, dito sa house bill na ito, napansin po yung ang teachers natin ay overwork. During election day, I've been a teacher for 32 years, and whenever there are elections, nangangapa ako sa dilim dahil uh, alimbawa three days ang election uh, two, uh, one day ang election pero yung mag-travel ng guru from from station to the barangay where she will be assigned it took him several days in some instances it took him several hours to reach the polling place and after the election ganun pa rin so security risk kung minsan ang mga guru natin inagawad pa ng baluta sa daan so Pag nagkataon sila, pagkasuhan ng, I'm sorry to tell, our our agency, the COMELEC, could deputize our teachers. Sometimes, instead of protecting our teachers, sila pa rin ang nagkasuhan sa mga guru natin. So, kaya, sabi ko, welcome development ito. Itong overwork na teachers natin, alam na alam natin po, Senator, na underpaid sila during election. Then, hindi na may tatatwa yung political harassment. Even the winning candidates and much more to the losing candidate. So kaya yung mga guru natin nalagay po sa alanganin na... Sir, itong bill, hybrid ito ah, yung chairman, public school teacher. Hindi na naman, di ba tatlong members ng BI? Apo. Sa ngayon, mandatory na tatl yung tatlong yan, public school teachers. Yeah, yeah. Sa bill, yung chairman, isa. Opo. Yung dalawa, hindi na. I-release na natin. Opo. So, okay, okay lang po yun? Opo. Opo. Kaya, okay. sabi ko, welcome development. So, dito po sa legal assistance, ito po ang pinaka-problema namin. Nakita ko dito sa bill na ito, na napansin po ng proponent of the bill, yung pangangailangan ng guru. Alam na alam natin na yung mga guru po natin, ay they are, sinasabi nga, the noblest among the professions this country or the world over. However, kami ang pinakawalang pera na uh, tao sa gobyerno. Kaya konting takot lang, takutin mo lang konti, nanginginig na po yung guru. Sabi, kasuhan kita. Hindi na yan makatulog po yung guru dahil alam na alam niya na defenseless siya. So pagkakita ko na nilagay ditong legal assistance, sabi ko ito, mabuhayan na ng lobang guru. Hindi upang magluko, kundi upang magkaroon siya ng depensa. So, then, siguro, as a whole, as president of PPST, and actually I am a superintendent, your honor, of Kinapawan City. 
And when I have seen the, 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 the copy of the proposed bill, parang nabuhayan talaga ako ng loob. And we have discussed this with my fellow superintendents in Region 12. And we really are supportive of this bill because I know and we know and we believe that this proposal is uh, recognizing you know, the, the age-old problem of our public school teachers. So hopefully, hopefully this will be approved uh, as a law so that uh, our teachers, you know, our teachers will be uh, saved from political harassment, from political risk during election. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Oh, else, uh, Lente, Mr. Tampos. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Mr. Chair, um, the, the very contention of this bill is um, to provide the, the teachers an opt-out provision of not rendering election service or when election day comes. And this bill um, cites these grounds, Your Honor, and um, they will only be allowed to... Um, not to render election service if it is well-founded. Plus, this is also for the protection of the teachers. That's why there is a provision on legal, indem uh, legal assistance, indemnification, and other benefits like um, death and hosp hospitalization benefits, Your Honor. Um, not only that, um, this bill also um, encourages um, private individuals to render election service on the day of the elections, subject only to that stated in paragraphs uh, paragraphs A to D of Section 3. And this also limits um, the, under RA 6646, if I'm not mistaken, Your Honor, it states that um, only private teachers, civil service employees, and persons of known probity and competence can render election service in lieu of the, uh, if there is a lack, laxity of public school teachers, but this time around, as a protection, as a safety net, um, the national government employees has been strictly uh, stated here, and the PN, and AFP is excluded, and PNP is to be deputized only if there is peace and order security, Your Honor. And I think this bill is okay. Yep. LP, uh, Attorney Martin, and then uh, Ms. Ignacio of Namfred. Yes, well, Mr. Chair, uh, we second, I second the motion of the previous um, social speakers. And I just have one question, Your Honor. Um, regarding to the section, regarding section 4 of the bill, which says that um, public school teachers may refuse. We're okay with that, Your Honor, because are, we are giving our teachers the opportunity to 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 evaluate for themselves their safety regarding that matter. My only question is that, Your Honor, when will they, uh, when's the time frame? Are we giving them a time frame to, let's say, communicate the refusal to work during elections? Because, Your Honor, the problem here is if they were already assigned and then suddenly a few days, a few weeks, or even a month before the election, they suddenly say that they will be withdrawing or refusing to, to, vote, uh, to rent their service. That's going to be a problem, Your Honor. If this bill becomes law, then COMELEC will have to have the, uh, the time, yung ta calendar nila of activities. Miss um, Ignacio, please, Namfrel. Namfrel has had the chance to be engaged in uh, international election monitoring. And we know that in other countries, particularly in Nepal, Bangladesh, Thailand, and Indonesia, the members of uh, the uh, Board of Election Inspectors are not teachers, not teachers. These are private individuals who are formed 60 days before the election. The implication of this is additional work for COMELEC in uh, recruiting, selecting, uh, screening, and uh, appointing the teachers. Uh, no, no, the members, the non-teacher um, board uh, of um, election inspectors. However, this has a very good advantage. I mean, the, the advantage of this is that it engages more citizens in the election process uh, rather than uh, teachers who are uh, overworked and, uh, you know, are overburdened. So we are in full support of this. The, the only caveat is 
the selection should uh, uh, be very careful in selecting people of high probity, independence, and nonpartisan. This is now the question from the author himself. Now, how, who, who, who says or who determines that this person is of known probity and competence? Especially when we reach letter D, yung, uh, let us say, deep search na, letter D na, any citizen of known probity and competence. Sino bang nagsasabi nun, uh, Mr. Malaya? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, this provision, I understand, was just taken from the uh, relevant provisions of the Omnibus Election Code. It's presently in the Omnibus Election Code that um, in addition to teachers, you know, any citizen of known probity and competence may also serve. So I don't know if how the COMELEC operationalizes this at present. Time for the COMELEC now, uh, Attorney Kelly Buyot. Have you, have, you seen, have you studied the bill? Uh, anong implication ito sa electoral system po natin? Your Honor, we have only three, um, three things. That's, that's why we are looking upon the teacher be, who will serve during the election period. One is um, one because of their integrity, two because of the accountability of the teachers, and then three is the availability, Your Honor. Um, that the um, integrity we all know if you are in the community, community, Your Honor, when you see a teacher, the respect is already there. As long as the uh, uh, in the community, as long as he or she is a teacher, there is already the respect given to the teacher. There is the uh, teachers are being dignified in the community, Your Honor. And then, Your Honor, their accountability. It's very easy for the common like the, um, your the, the accountability uh, the accountability when it comes to all the election for referendums and materials, Your Honor. And then in the community, Your Honors, it's their availability. It's all they are, they are already in place in the community, Your Honor. That's why the Comelec sees that um, um, making election service mandatory for public school teachers, Your Honor. And then when it comes to the um, to the question to the question of um, sir here, how we uh, operationalize the we operationalize the if the, there are non teachers your honor um we ha we are we are the commission are um, draft, um implementing rules and regulations during elections how we are how we are going to identify the non non teachers your honor during the, who will serve as BEIs. when we go to actual practice okay <clears throat> diba there were a round figure na natin no? 80000 precincts kanyare Diba? Clustered precincts, 80,000, times three. Diba? Three members of the BEI. So 240,000 uh, people that you that you mobilize yes. to man the precincts. For example, in the last elections, were all those public school teachers? Um, no, you uh, Hindi, no? Hindi, di ba? Oh. Hindi. How did you now... Ang, fir ang first, op first choice you public school teachers, right? Yes. But you did not get 240,000. We, we willing or available to serve. So how did you now produce? How did you choose or pick the the uh, the substitutes for the public school teachers? Um, there is a recommendation, Your Honor, for the in the community po. Na these persons may serve, and then the election officer will going to look at the correct the qualifications of the person dun sa mga poll members na hindi po teachers and then we fill them up po. Pero gusto, should... gusto, ko, gusto ko malaman ilan eh, ilan yung, kasi maybe kunyari uh, 240 you were able to produce 210,000 teachers or so 30,000 lang yung non-public school teachers so you were able to do it but with this, if this bill becomes law uh, as pointed out by Mr. Tampos, opt out, di ba? Opt out, they can say na uh, willing should there should there be not enough teachers willing available or qualified to serve so willingness to serve so uh, this teacher says we still need 240,000 120,000 are willing to serve so you now have to look for 120,000 substitutes you follow the the order so pero ano din ito willingness din ito di ba itong itong a b c d willingness din ito so uh, so how, and how do you do it now? And then 
now that it's public school teachers, and then I'm sure nandi naman lahat yung public school teachers, how did you feel up? You know, and then are you confident that if we give them opt out and uh, a big number uh, of them uh, opt out, can you can you fill fill, fill up the vacancies? Donico? Uh, Your Honor, during the last uh, elections, uh, may experience po kami, sir, na yung public school teacher mismo yung gagawa ng recommendation as to whom he is, uh, yung sa akala niya na mapagkakatiwalaan, sir. So, magre-recommend siya sa amin and then the COMELEC will see the qualifications and uh, if uh, disqualification if any of the one. Uh, yung recommended niya, hindi na public school teacher yon. It may, and it, it may yes. not be. Oh, it may or it may not be. Yes, sir. No. So, ilang kaya doon yung hindi na public school teachers? At pinayagan nyo ba lahat? Meron ba kayong sinabi na hindi to qualified? Meron bang ganun? Ganun ba kalalim yung inyong pag ano sa mga aplikante? Katapos, tapos ilan lang yun? Ilan lang yung nagpa-replace? Yun ang gusto malaman eh. So, kasi sa ngayon, with this bill, worst case scenario, marami ang mag-opt mag out. <clears throat> Can you now... Can you can you fill up the positions uh, quickly enough that it will not affect the holding of the elections? Well, uh, at this point, Your Honor, we have uh, no uh, available data yet as as to the statistics of kung ilang po yung mga substitutes na hindi po ano hindi po public school teachers. In timeline, actually, in timeline, uh, sa ngayon, ha, as currently practice, in timeline. When should the public school uh, teacher designated as BI member manifest that I cannot serve? And here is my recommended uh, replacement. Ano sa, yung sa last election, ano yung timeline ninyo? When should that public school teacher BI member manifest that I need to be replaced? Uh, as far as we can remember, Your Honor, at least uh, January, last, last January, Your Honor. January na Mayo ang eleksyon, no? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so dilang months yan. Three, as four? Yes, Your Honor. As four, ma, four, three to four months. Huh? Okay, Mr. Tampus. Um, sir, uh, the organization, uh, Lente, conducted a research last October during the barangay elections, and um, we were able, uh, we focused on the availability of non-public school teachers who may render election service on that day. Um, based on our study, sir, 70% that we have interviewed from the election officer, sir, um, we called out 295 um, non-public school teachers who rendered election service uh, for October barangay elections all throughout the country. So that's only 295. And... Um, it, in our study, it goes to show that there is really an avail. Uh, there is really a huge pool of available people you can uh, you can call, especially to render election service. Um, on the ground, sir, uh, it has been a practice of uh, Comelec on the ground to appoint persons of known probity and competence. Uh, however, there is no stringent rule or system. Uh, in place. In one of the studies with that we have also uh, conducted, sir, um, one of the election officers on the day of the election immediately replaced a member of the BEI due to incompetence by reason of failure to attend the trainings that is mandated by the COMELEC. And at that point, sir, um, a non-public school teacher has been appointed. So there, we have an available, uh, huge available number, sir. So <clears throat> we have the Teachers' Dignity Coalition in Mr. Basas. Oh. So po, we are now tackling Senate Bill 2178. Actually, sa nitty-gritty na rin tayo pumupunta, eh, uh, how it will... But, Comelec, you should seriously study this. Ano? Uh, are you ready with the position paper on this bill now? Did you bring a position paper or... Uh, do you have a position already? Your Honor, we have already a, uh, a position paper um, drafted by Director Elnas and was uh, previously uh, confirmed by the Commission and Bank uh, in relation to the third technical working group that happened in the lower house on March 3, 2014, Your Honor. 
similar, similar bill? Yes, sir. Uh, what is your, the conclusion of the COMELEC? Uh, the conclusion of the COMELEC is that we, although we, we understand the sentiments of our teachers, but the stand of the Commission is that we adhere to the current provision of lawmaking election service mandatory for public school teachers, uh, as said by Attorney Caliboy a while ago, because of their integrity, accountability, and availability, Your Honor. So, the committee asks for a copy of the position paper, but for the, for the House Bill, yeah, but we will. Uh, yes, Mr. Basas, Bas Bas any reaction? Sige po. And then, sir, kayo. Kandang hapon po, uh, Senator, at sa lahat po ng nariya dito. Yung amin pong uh, position din, eh, ni-uphold din namin yung aming position ever since noon. Mula nung kami ay nag-push nag, uh, no, for for the um, for the amendment, no, or this particular provision of the Omnibus Election Code. No, Doon po, uh, 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 Siguro na sabi na po ng ilang makasama from Lente no, no na nandoon pa rin po yung aming position. But uh, maganda yung narinig ko ngayon kay attorney no, the gentleman from Comelec na integrity no, uh, availability at uh, competency no, uh, accountability no at, uh, ng ng DepEd teachers no based on our studies po no na, na ginawa din naman ano namin ano nung mga nakalipas ay nakita naman po namin sa issue ng account uh, sa issue ng um ng um, availability eh, napakarami po nang po pwede no sa issue po ng available uh, ng um, accountability pwede naman no? no na hindi naman kasi tayo magpapao po basta-basta na kahit na sino no kasi given the the existing provision no na yung description dapat eh any citizen of known <laughs> probity no and competence no so pwede nating uh, maggawa no nung ang COMELEC no ng ng mga guidelines kung paano natin na piliin paano natin i-screen yung mga tao na uupo no sa election ano at ang sinasabi lamang naman namin dito hangga't ang ang uh, election duty ng public school teachers ay mandatory no hindi kami makakaligtas no hindi kami maliliberate no doon sa napakaraming mga um nasa tingin namin no sa tuwing panahon ng election ay doon sa napakaraming uh, well as some would say no um oppression no uh, some would say um parang um pagsasamantala po no doon sa amin no? the, the COMELEC no really no and the, the state no um generally no? The, the government is taking advantage no of that provision of the the omnibus election code kung saan nalalagay po doon sa very disadvantaged position yung public school teachers kasi po kung magkano lang po pwedeng ibigay sa amin ako uh, as per the resolution no ng COMELEC yun lang ang ibabayad no madalas pa na delay po yan alam naman natin ano yung um yung hindi makatanggi no kahit doon sa mga rason na talaga na mga um, lalo na dun sa mga delikadong mga lugar no natandaan po natin nung nakaraang barangay election sa ano po na mayroong isang libong teacher sa Maguindanao ang nagrefuse to serve no ah uh, hindi ito naman basta pinayagan ano po although 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 naganap yung refusal na yun ano po um pero they were threatened those teachers were threatened no nakakasuhan ng dalawang kaso no both admin and uh, criminal because there is a criminal liability no and of course yung administrative liability niya ng public school teachers no so yun yung accountability na binabanggit kasi kami ay hold na hold ng batas no under these provisions these particular provisions no so kawawa naman po kami no bakit sa ibang bansa naman hindi naman public school teachers no ang uh, ang kinokompel no bakit sa Pilipinas ay ganun kumbaga wala na bang iba na maaari nating pagkatiwalaan well uh, we say thank you no uh, dun sa ating gobyerno no uh, pag sa, sa pagsasabi ng public school teachers ay talaga mapagkakatiwalaan salamat po no totoo naman po yan no? hindi naman namin itataya ang aming uh, ang aming lisensya no at ang aming dignidad no bilang mga mga guro no pero sana po no tapatan naman no nung uh, nung maayos no na compensation ng ng uh, pangangalaga no ng um ng assurance na kami ay safe no dito sa dito sa election duties po na ito no at sa tingin po namin magiging safe lamang kami makokompensate lamang kami ng maayos no uh, mawawala yung mga hazards na aming uh, hinaharap no kung meron pong batas na ito uh, muli inuulit ko po no hindi po lang simpleng ayaw lamang namin no actually yung public school teachers pa pag tinanong po natin no ay willing no because um, we consider this as our patriotic duty no a uh, few years ago nung 2010 i think 2007 or 2010 elections po no may mga teachers sa Quezon City na hindi sila binigyan no ng um, hindi sila pinuupo no eh 
27 years, no? Kasi manual pa tayo doon. Hindi sila nakaupo, no? Ang ginawa po nila, umapil sila sa Comelec para bigyan sila, no? Ng, yes, e, ibig sabihin, gusto po nila ito, no? Hindi simpleng ayaw lang namin. Ang gusto lang naman po namin dito talaga ay mabantayan. Ang gusto lamang naman natin, namin dito ay maproteksyonan kami, no? La, importante po yung legal protection, ano? Yung physical na, na protection, ano? Na hindi po kayang uh, ma-insure ng Comelec, no? At ng buong gobyerno po sa kasalukuyan. Salamat po. Tsaka binabago yung rule, ibago, binabago yung rule, di ba? Ngayon na uh, mandatory, may opt-out uh, mechanism na. Sige, uh, Mr. Makasayon, please. Sa uh, na, nakakataba ng pusong statement ng kumilik, dahil kami ang pinagkakatiwalaan, yung availability namin lagi. So, yun, katulad po nung sinabi nung sa TDC, uh, sa ginong basas na ang, ang teacher po laging kung may sensos, kung may lahat-lahat ng trabaho sa barangay na uh, sponsor ng gobyerno, teacher ang laging nakikita. So, laki kaming nagpapasalamat doon dahil sa tiwala ng ating gobyerno. Pero yun nga po, yung sana po, hindi yung compulsory yung, yung serbisyo namin sa eleksyon, na hindi naman po kami napoprotektahan ng kumilik. So, sinasabi, deputized by the kumilik. Pero, yung deputy ng kumilik, kung minsan, kumilik mismo ang nag-file ng kaso against the deputy. So, ito po ang nakapanlulumong isipin ng isang guro na yung nagtitiwala sa iyo, siya mismo ang magkakaso sa iyo kung nagkamali ka. Citing a very concrete example in the, in the, in the province, Uh, uh, that was election, uh, medyo matagal-tagal na po. Pero ganito ang nangyari po. Yung dahil sa kalukuhan din ng mga butante, yung, yung, yung official ballot ng adjacent uh, precinct, nagkapalit po kasi hindi na naman po mabantayan ng, ng teacher yung mga butante na unruly. E ang batas naman po is bawal yung polis na lumapit. So malayo. So ang poor teacher, mayroon tayong mga komunidad na walang karapatan, walang kuhan yung guru, na i-arrest yung, yung unruly na butante. O, oh, ikaw pang i-arrest eh. Mayroon tayong mga presinto na allowed magdala ng baril sa loob ng presinto. Kahit hindi inaalaw, pero sa totoo, nangyari. No? Ako, superintendent ako, at saka supervisor ako, principal ako, nakita ko, I'm 32 years in the service. Kaya po nung mabasa ko itong, itong proposal, itong uh, Senate Bill uh, 2178 sabi ko Lord uh, God ito na ang ito na ang sagot sa tentim na panalangin ng mga guru sa buong kapuluan na bakit kung election maraming nagtitiwala sa amin pero kung nagkamali ang guru itatakutin iharas, ibilanggo ka. Ang guru po, hindi nakakatulog dahil takot sa kaso yan. Hindi counting, sabi mo na, di ba, dakala nila, makukulong na sila. Yun po ang isyo. So, sana po, makita po kung hindi man uh, malis yung mandato namin na kami ang maghawag sa eleksyon, sana po marecognize yung plight ng teacher. Number one, dapat yung pagka-overwork, dapat may may tamang compensation. So, hindi po kami nanghingi ng malabis. Magkano last time, sir? Last uh, election? Magkano compensation? Kung maalala nyo. Pa. Parang, hindi ko masyado pa. 3,000. Uh, Mr. Basas, please. Please use the mic. Uh, 3,000 pesos po. 3,000 pesos. Plus uh, another 1,200 something. And then, uh, nagbigay po ng additional ngayong January na 300 pesos for for the latest uh, elections po nung, nung, com, uh, nung October. Barangay, yung opo, barangay opo. na. Pero yung 2013 po ay 4,000. 4,000. Um, mayroon pa po, uh, Mr. Uh, Makasayan? Uh, after so, him. hindi na po bali kung talagang walang mapagkatiwalaan na uh, ganun kadabi ng tao sa Pilipinas na mag-serve sa eleksyon, pero sana po ma-recognize din ng Comelec o ng ating gobyerno yung dapat, yung karampatan na dapat ibigay sa guru. Pero pinaka-importante po yung protection. Kasi yun nga, may guru kami sa Palimbang na hanggang ngayon, hindi na solbar yung pagkamatay ng guru. So, nabigay sa komite yung pangalan, insidente, tingnan natin. So, <coughs> Nakupakuha tayo na sa police authorities, ano bang ginawa nila dyan? Kawawa talaga. Apo, apo, naging, naging statistic na lang yung 
kapwa niyo guro. Opo. Statistics. So, ang mga, uh, ang mga guro na hinaharas ng mga losing candidate, even winning candidates, ay hindi natutulog po. Takot na takot dahil konting pananakot lang. Takot na yan. Ipa, so, thank you. Mr. Malaya, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to contextualize the bill, Mr. Chairman, um, in the previous Congresses, the bill was a very simple bill. The bill was simply making election service voluntary. No, but uh, every now and then, the Kobalik would come and submit a position paper wherein they would continue to say that, you know, integrity, accountability, and availability of teachers. And of course, that's a valid concern. However, the teachers have been fighting for this for a very, very long time. I think for the past three Congresses, various versions of the bill has been submitted to both the lower house and here in the upper house. So the present version of the bill now, I think, uh, already inculcates and incorporates all of the comments of various sectors, particularly the Kobalik. Um, um, if you will look at the present provision now, as a general policy, um, the general policy is uh, teachers will serve, especially if they're willing, available, and qualified. However, if there are not enough, and we have been going around the country, and teachers really want to serve, as mentioned by our friends from PPSD and TDC, gusto po nilang magsilbi. Kung wala po talagang magsisilbi, then we go through this order of preference. However, if it's really needed for teachers to serve, may provision pa pong dinagdag tayo dito. The COMELEC may oblige public school teachers and the chairman at all times must be a public school teacher. So there is no diminution of the powers of COMELEC here. The COMELEC is still the boss. no? However, if the teacher wishes to opt out under Section 4 because of health, eh, matanda na po siya, or age, or security, Siguro naman papagbigyan na natin yung teacher. Let's not let's not uh, require him to serve anymore if it's his life on the line or his or her life on the line. And then under the bill, the COMELEC may now deputize other either the uh, Philippine National Police or the AFP. So, Mr. Chairman, um, ha having having said that, no, while we appreciate the concerns raised by COMELEC, na ipagsama sama na po natin. This has already has gone through a long process, especially in the lower house, and we have been working very closely with Director Elnas there, no. Uh, we understand where they're coming from. Of course, they would like to maintain the status quo, but I think the clamor of public school teachers is equally as valid and justified. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Malaya, can, can Section 4 be used uh, by the designated chairperson? So, in, in if, uh, ang basa ko kasi dito, kunyari, there are 80,000 precincts. There must be at least, minimum, 80,000 public school teachers serving, but can a designated chairperson use Section 4? Uh, and then... Yeah. Yeah. Under the provisions, the present provisions of the bill, Mr. Chairman, yes. Because a public school teacher can either be a chairman or any other yeah, So, if it's a matter of security... Hindi pala floor yung 80,000, it could possibly na 75,000 na because 5,000 the public school te teachers designated as chairperson say na we invoke section 4. Pwede ganon? Pwede po, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. However, in the last so election I, 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 of uh, 2013, Hindi naman po umabot sa napakadaming teachers. No? It was only in Maguindano really because of security problem when there were so many public school teachers who refused to serve. However, in other parts of the country, pa-isa-isa pa, 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 lang po. Kasi mas magiging madali na rin yung election natin. It's now... Um, pero, pero siyempre, the law must anticipate... Uh, kasi mag-contradict mag, mag, kasi yung sa provided that the chairperson shall be a public, public school teacher. Meron dun eh. Parang ano mas absolute rule yun eh. Tapos meron tayong section 4 na opt-out. So baka ma-violate yung absolute rule. Anyway, uh, sa technical working group, ayusin na lang natin yan. We, we, anticipate, we should anticipate. Ma'am, ma ma sa ngayon, friend, can you, can you share with us yung ano? In, in writing na po, hindi na po as at this, yung experience of other countries, ano bang, how they do it? We will do that. Yes, yung kasi, uh, many countries have you observed po? Yung, uh, Kanina, binanggit to Thailand. Uh, yes, as, uh, we are sure sa recollection ko, that Nepal, Bangladesh, Thailand, and Indonesia have inter multidisciplinary members of the BEI. And and if, we, we, Sanya, if we have their, 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 a copy of their law, paano nila, we will. Uh, you know, please, we will the, the committee your, would appreciate it. Yes. So I will, you know, uh, the, the preference, uh, the inclination of the chairman is to report out this bill. Uh, so, Komelek, pakiano na lang. Uh, Laruin, laruin ninyo ito. I mean, meron siguro kayo mga scenarios and then timelines uh, so that it will be discussed in the plenary. Uh, other, you know, other observations will come out. Uh, other worries and concerns will come out from the senators. Ano lang naman dito is, ano eh, kung 
kung ano pa ba, mahold pa ba natin yung elections natin this in the same way as when public school teachers were the ones running the the, the precincts, manning the precincts. Yan lang, yan lang naman yung tanong dito eh. Isa ka simple, yan ba, uh, opinion? Actually, yung suggestions ng uh, Mr. Chair, sa US, halimbawa, yung mga uh, equivalent na BI body doon uh, are usually composed of members of political parties. Kasi dalawang party lang naman doon eh. Tatlong tao. Ad hoc sila, ad hoc. Hindi sila permanent, ano, di ba? Ad hoc. Ang comelec nila. The whole comelec nila uh, is ad hoc. Ad -hoc. The, sec the secretary of state sa isang state, ang uh, election officer. At sa county level, it's the county clerk. In fact, sa kanila, yung county clerk is an elected position. Kaya may mga case ka talaga doon na yung magkaka magkalaban ay uh, county clerk tsaka yung ka kalaban niyang gustong tumakbo sa posisyon. Pero yung assurance kasi sa kanila, yung two-party system, isang Democrat, isang Republican, at saka isang mutually agreed upon person. At yun ang chairman. Kaya nagbabantayan. If you remember in our history, before martial law, may ganyang klaseng arrangement before eh. Yung, yung concept ng public school teacher na neutral, quote-unquote, non-partisan, mas lumitaw pa yan after martial law. At ang reasoning, of course, is that hindi, hindi sila mapiktado ng mga politiko. Lalo na may multi-party system tayo, mahirap na mag-designate. Ano? In fact, isang malaking problema yung usapin ng dominant party at uh, saka yung opposition dominant party. Ang, uh, ang isang magandang example sa observa ko doon sa U.S. elections, yung pag-mobilize nila nung citizens ng community na may probity, integrity, etc. Nag, Nag-zeroin sa dalawang sektor. Eh. I, I don't know if Comelec uh, can follow this up. Ano? One, yung mga retired citizens natin. Wala na ginagawa sa buhay yan. Eh. Retired na nga eh. Usually, they have all the time in the world at may background na yan. Retired teachers, halimbawa. Uh, uh, hindi, pwede. Retired teachers kasi eh. They already have the experience. They know how it's being run. Voluntary na ito. Hindi, I'm not speaking here compulsory. And the second are students. Yung hindi pa uh, obeyed so, no, sa regular election, meaning less than 18 years old, na nandun na sa age na maging responsible na sa etc. Uh, I'm not saying na mag-teacher man sila, pero they can be members. So isang tingnan din yun. Ano? Kasi ako, ang tingin ko, ang problema dito yung baka nagiging... Uh, Tamad tayo eh. Madali kasi mag-sabi na, sige teachers, pool ka agad, may pool ka agad ng pagkukunan. Pero isang possibility kasi sa batas, and I'm directing this to the technical working group, kung hindi ka required na magkaroon ng pool before the election pa, ng mga possible na mga magsiserve sa BI, at pagdating ng tamang panahon, eh doon ka na kumura kasi pre ano na yan. Kaya credited na yan, may, hindi ka na mag, mag, magtatakbo pat maghahanap at the last moment. At kung may kulang, nabagay mo kumuha from that pool din. Kung maging batas ito, mag-prepersa ang COMELEC to adapt this pool concept. Oh, uh, diba? Uh, oh. Definitely. Uh, isang ano yan, isang uh, issue sure, yan, uh, solusyon. Ano? Uh, Pero personal level ito eh. Oo oh, nga, oo oh, nga. Uh, oh, Ah, sige, ah, Mr. Mal Mr. Mal yeah, Mr. Chairman, actually that suggestion was discussed in the TWG and the COMELEC was present. No? And if this becomes law, you are correct. Uh, the COMELEC uh, will, will not have to look for this uh, uh, private citizens who will serve at the last minute. Matagal pa, meron na silang pool. So hindi tayo mabubulaga kung sakasakali may mga teachers na ayaw magsilbi. Okay. So can we, can we move on to the next ano na, uh, items? Okay, we will defer the political, uh, the party list system, you know, uh, bills. Because, siguro, I, I will direct our committee na specific din ito to invite the various party lists, winners and losers, uh, para pag-usapan natin ito. So, can we now tackle the other pending bills? Isa yung vote shaving and padding. Have you seen? Uh, have you studied this, Komenek? Uh, Senate Bill Number Eight Sixty Nine. And uh, Senate Bill 966. Uh, yes, Your Honor. In fact, yes. Uh, in fact, Your Honor, it is already included in the position paper that we have submitted to the committee, Your Honor. 
now just recently you submitted uh, yes your honor uh, what, what's the position of the comelec uh, as regards to senate bill 869 your honor uh, It is the position of the Commission that the, the entirety of this bill defined the electoral offense of vote shaving or vote padding in the sole context of favoring a certain candidate for the purpose of ensuring the election of the favored candidate to public office. It apparently failed to consider that the offense of vote shaving or vote padding can similarly be committed to ensure that a candidate would lose in its bid for candidacy. The Commission of Vote Shaving or Vote Padding is not always impelled by the sole purpose of favoring a candidate as when the offender envisions that a candidate will lose regardless of who among them will win. With this, it is the humble suggestion of the Commission in order for this bill to be all-encompassing, the phrase or the defeat of one should be added, Your Honor. So, okay, that's, that, that was for Senate Bill 869. How about for Senate Bill 966? Uh, your Honor, moreover, in, uh, moreover, Your Honor, in relation still to Senate Bill 869, uh, we also, the Commission also recommends that the bill be harmonized with the provision of Section 42 of Republic Act Number no. 9369, which principally covers vote shaving and vote padding under the terms tampering, increasing, or decreasing of votes in said section. And furthermore, it shall be noted that in the second paragraph of Number no. 3, the penalty of an offender who is a public officer is death. However, Section 19, Paragraph 1, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution provides that excessive fines shall not be imposed, nor cruel, degrading, or inhuman punishment inflicted. Neither shall death penalty be imposed unless for compelling reasons involving heinous crimes the Congress hereafter provides for it. Any death penalty already imposed... Okay, okay, okay Attorney Ko, yung death penalty, pagdating sa death penalty. Pero yung, yung 869, hindi pa siya cover doon sa RA 9369. Talagang, there, there is a need for uh, a new law to co Or uh, does, it, does it only repeat uh, what a, a rule or a law which is already existing in 9369? Pwede hindi, no? Kasi baka manual sa manual ito, yung yes, 1969 sa automated. As i-harmonize or i-ano? I-harmonize or uh, anong tawag mo yan? I-combine. I-combine siguro yung two concepts, no? As pointed out in your position paper. Yes, sir. Okay, we will take a look at that. Huh? How about 966, sir? Uh, we... Uh, your, or, your Honor, uh, this bill is the same with Senate Bill 869. The only variation is the penalty imposable. While the latter imposes the penalty of not less than one year to not to not more than 40 years, this bill imposes the penalty of reclusion perpetua. So, so we have the same comment as okay, same comment. with 86, Senate Bill 869, Your Honor. Okay, so, ah, ma'am, ah, Miss, Miss uh, Ignacio? Mr. Chairman, which brings us to a similar issue, not entirely um, different, but not... Uh, not entirely different from here. Kasi, yun nga, ang, with regards to the matter on at hand, sabi ko, parang vote shaving and vote padding, ang nire-refer dito would be the board, the canvassing board, di ba? Na wala na sa automatic, automated election process. So, mukhang hindi na kailangan dito. Mukhang ang trust nito would be the uh, level of penalties given. Which brings us to a some sort of quote unquote anomaly eh, sa batas na kung saan ang mga offenses pare pareho iisa lamang ang ang penalty so whether you violate the matter of giving an election paraphernalia or you know campaign material kapantay ng vote shaving Para bang, uh, we, 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 ang, we will sort this out. Tapos yung baka nga sa manual, sa manual pa ito eh. Parang iyon uh, na dapat tingnan. Pero ako kasi ang attitude ko, we, we also, we don't let go of the manual. Kasi manual is the backup, di ba? Backup plan in case the automate, uh, automated system fails, ban manual tayo. So, tingnan natin. If, if it is an improvement uh, of the rules regarding manual elections, then we will consider it. Pero we will take note of yung sinabi mo na yung, yung penalties. Okay, so 
Let's move on. The, the committee also uh, received two house bills. Uh, unahin natin yung, ano, yung declaring house bill number 4112, an act declaring Tuesday immediately after the second Monday of 2016 and every three years thereafter a non-working holiday. LP. So, alam mo, di ba ma'am, sa ibang bansa, hindi nga, hindi nga holiday election day. Ito, we're making holiday the, the day after election. Uh, the day after the Tuesday. Ex <clears throat> exactly. That's our initial reaction. Sobra, sobra, sobra na ang holiday. Ta to the maximum. So, time ano na lang siguro tayo, sab against this the, for those who want to submit position papers, please, uh, on the on this proposal to, to, ano, to make Tuesday uh, uh, a holiday, uh, non-working holiday. Uh, House Bill 4111. Naaral nyo na to, Komilek? Your Honor, it is uh, also Honor, part please. of the position paper that we have submitted. You already submitted. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so for the other groups, if uh, just in case, maybe even Teachers Dignity Coalition, kung meron kayong uh, stand po rito, gusto nyo ba holiday yung Tuesday after election? Para makapahinga? Actually po, may mga pagkakataon na hiniling po namin yan, ano po. Uh, but uh, of course, for, for the teachers lang who serve no, the elections, like uh, specifically nung nakaraan po, no, nung pong uh, October, opo, hmm. nung pong October po, no, kasi, ito, uh, e e this is a very practical um, experience po, no, for all the teachers who serve in, in October, barangay elections po, no, 2013, ano po. Monday and then uh, Tuesday uh, kami ay ay um, pinapapasok na no ng Department of Education because meron pa po kami ano niyan eh um, in service training po no na kasi sumakto yan doon sa aming semestral break so sa tingin namin that would be very ano talaga uh, impractical no for us teachers kasi hindi talaga kami maka dahil manual yung election eh Ibig sabihin po, madaling araw, nagbabalik pa lamang kami no, ng aming mga parapernalya, ng aming mga ballot boxes doon sa mga election centers. No? So, if ever, na i-grant naman niya, uh, sa, sa tingin ko naman po, no, uh, 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 honestly, mukhang hindi naman kailangan pa na isang batas no, na, na hiwalay para doon. Basta siguro na lang, i-grant na lang sa public school teachers at mukhang administration or management call na lang oh, on the part of the Department of Education and even sa COMELEC po, siguro. Pala, may manual elections pa pala tayo, kaya <coughs> in barangay at SK, kaya hindi natin dapat i-drop ang <coughs> rules on manual. No? Basta ang, ang rules natin on manual elections, uh, we, if, kung may, if we can continue to improve them, we continue to improve them. Although automated na yung, yung karamihan, meron pa rin tayong mga manual. Okay, so <coughs> so with that, uh, siguro uh, I, will I will suspend the hearing because may naiwan pa tayong topics which is party list. Uh, which I will now pursue in the next hearing to, and we will just add uh, some of the other uh, pending bills which require uh, additional hearings. No? So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Basas, uh, yes. may just manifest my, uh, my intention po na sana dun sa susunod na hearing on party list. May invite din kami kasi I am wearing another hat. No? I am the first nominee of ating guru party list and now work is pending before the Supreme Court now po. Hindi ko nga tinakil niyo kasi uh, the only party, political party here is uh, li Liberal Party. So, we will improve our, uh, bayan muna pala is also here, we will improve our uh, invitation, you know, na all, all, all nakaupo, all yung tumakbo, hindi nagsucceed, lahat po inv invite natin so that ideas will come out, no? So, with that, so thank you very much to all of our resource persons. Uh, our hearing for this afternoon is hereby suspended.